Have I ever made a kitchen knife? No. Am I making a kitchen knife in this video? Yes. So yeah, today I'm gonna be making the Simple Little Life Kitchen Knife Build Along. Now it's taken me a long time to get to this project. Uh, a lot of it was out of fear. Uh, I've never made a kitchen knife before. I don't normally make uh, hidden tang knives. Uh, so this one was a little intimidating to me, but this is, this is a knife I'll be doing today. Let's see here. Yep, I basically took his uh, design and I drew it in CAD so that I'll have a template to go to. And uh, that's what you're gonna be seeing today. So most of this video is gonna be uh, with mic commentary, but I'll come in and out here and there to kind of give you an update. So with that, let's get started. So we're gonna be making this knife out of a piece of 1084. Uh, normally kitchen knives, I think, are made out of stainless, but I don't have the capacity or the equipment to heat treat stainless on my own. So we're gonna be making this out of a piece of 1084 high carbon steel. It is going to be a little thicker, I think, than a lot of kitchen knives. I'm making it out of an eighth of an inch stock as well. So we'll see how that works out. First thing I did was get it drawn out and then cut out the rough tang on the bandsaw. And then I head over to my mini mill with an eighth inch um, end mill. And the goal here was to make my shoulders uh, parallel and flat to each other. You can also do this with a file guide, but uh, I figured I'd give it a shot in my mini mill and see if I can get these two shoulders to be identical. So you can see here that all I'm doing is lifting up and moving the mill on one axis so that I can get both of these shoulders uh, perfectly lined up to each other. So this worked pretty good. Uh, after I got these two shoulders lined up, I went back to the bandsaw and cut off the excess and then I hit it even more on the belt sander to get it tapered down. So here I am cutting out the rough profile of the blade. I had left it square so that I can clamp it in my vise in the mini mill. Uh, this is a router bit in my mini mill and I'm using it to flatten uh, this uh, block of wood here, which this block is actually some gum. Uh, it wasn't square so I wanted to make it perfectly square so I can use it for the handle. You can see here I have some inclusions uh, in that wood, so I went ahead and just cut that off. Now, this is some pretty soft stuff here, by the way. I, I know it's stabilized, but it's uh, definitely not gonna be on a knife you are gonna be batoning or anything like that. But for a kitchen knife, uh, it's gonna look great. All right, so I have a piece of Mexican Royal Ebony that I'll be using as kind of a bolster and then that gum will be the bulk of the handle. So next up is to get this guy profiled out on the belt sander. I'm using just some aluminum oxide belts and then I move up to uh, some ceramic belts here to get it nice and profiled out. By the way, this small wheel attachment from Origin Blade Maker is an excellent addition, an excellent addition to the shop. Uh, I use it, I use it all the time. So this is what it looks like before I start grinding my bevels. I'll go ahead and scribe out some uh, guidelines here so that I can kind of have something to shoot for. And then I scribe out a center line on the edge so that I have an edge uh, thickness to shoot for. So I've been starting to grind my bevels without a jig and so this is one of the first knives I've ground freehand. Uh, and I, you know, it's a good knife to start off with since the plunges aren't as sharp. But uh, I get a really aggressive angle going into the belt, maybe around a 45 degree angle. And then I slowly work that up the spine after I get my edge thickness where I want it. So I'm starting off here on an 80 grit ceramic belt. A little slower than a 36, but uh, I make less mistakes at this point, so slow is okay uh, for me right now. So I'm about to show uh, what the 80 grit scratch pattern looks like uh, when I was done with it, so it doesn't look too bad. I then move to a 120 grit J-Flex belt uh, to get this guy uh, pre-heat treat finished. 
I'm using the green Made in Germany J Flex belts from uh, True Grit. I, I really like those. But that's 120 grit, and now it's time to get the forge out. So you'll see I'll be wearing a lot of different clothes uh, during the course of this video. It's because this knife took me a long time to do, and I've kind of worked on it as a side project while doing other other knives. So I get the forge started up, and this is the uh, first time I'll be quenching with Parks 50, which is what you should be using if you're going to be quenching a 10A4. Uh, it's a professional grade quench oil, so it can be used at, I think the the data sheet says anywhere between uh, 50 degrees Fahrenheit and 90 degrees Fahrenheit, so I thought that was pretty good. I put it in a 81 millimeter ammo can, about five gallons, and it's, it's, the, perfect, uh, it's the perfect amount there to give me a little bit of headspace in the ammo can. So I'll get it up to temperature and we're going to do two normalizing cycles. As you can see I speed it up here so you can see it cool down. Uh, we get this blade normalized and then heat it up and quench it. It's a little precarious here. I was trying to film it with the camera in my hand. That was probably not a good idea but it worked out. The blade's nice and hard. Skates a file. Always a good sign. While I was doing that, I got my tempering oven uh, cranked up to 213 degrees Celsius for our first tempering cycle. After two hours, I take the blade out. I then dunk it in water to cool it to room temperature. And then we do it again. Another two hour cycle at 213 degrees Celsius. After the heat treating, I have some nice gator belts here I want to try out. You know, this is a knife that I'm going to keep for myself, so I want to try some new things. And to be honest, the whole thing is me trying new things because this is the first kitchen knife I've ever made. So I decided to take these gator belts for a ride. I've had questionable results with these before just because I've had a hard time with the plunges. But since this plunge is such a sweeping plunge, I figure uh, I can try these out again. I really like the finish these uh, gator belts provide. Uh, if anything, they'd, they'd provide one hell of a finish. And then hit it with a cork belt, and it's off to some freaking epic hand sanding. I hope you guys are ready for this. Hold on to your hats. Oh, they scared me. Hey, before we get back to the commentary, I'm gonna tell you the single best tip I ever got for hand sanding. And here it is. Once you think you're done, do it for another hour. And that's the truth, guys. Once you think you're done, do it for another hour. You will find scratches and you will get them cleaned up. So I took this up to a 320 grit uh, hand sanded finish didn't go too high. I just kind of wanted to see what it looked like and I kind of liked it so and I was lazy. So I took it to 320 and left it there. I then get the blade taped up to protect it and start trying to figure out this handle. Uh, the first thing I did was I drilled some holes into this handle bolster here and then I went with some files to connect those holes. Kind of a more traditional method. Uh, this is me milling the back side to kind of give me some space back there so I don't have to file so much. I did this for an hour or two and I got it pretty close but then I realized that the eighth of an inch end mill would have gave me a better result uh, since my slot was bigger than that so uh, I ended up ditching this piece and just using my eighth of an inch end mill uh, to mill out in a perfect slot here. And that ended up being uh, pretty darn close to the appropriate dimensions. It's not a perfect fit. Uh, I think if I was doing this again um, I would try to take down the tang on the two sides, not only the top and the bottom, so that there was a little bit of a recess there, uh, so that my bolster could fit up against that shoulder. Uh, but live and learn. I then put a half inch hole in the piece of gum and then serrated the tang. Alright, 
So I was gonna try to make this hole a little bigger and uh, my bit grabbed the corner because it wasn't perfectly straight and really jacked this thing up. Let's see if I can focus. So I'm gonna have to improvise here. So to improvise, I went ahead and milled off the end that broke and then make it perfectly flat again. And then I'm going to add some more spacers. So I end up adding a spacer of ironwood and then one of canvas micarta uh, to have a three stack spacer bolster and then onto the gum here. Uh, so it, it worked out okay. It looks kind of like a hodgepodge of pieces, but uh, it ended up looking okay. To get my hole a little deeper, I used a half inch bit here instead of the end mill. It seemed to perform better. And then I'm going to be using the dowel method, uh, which I saw on uh, Simple Little Live's channel there. Uh, and it seemed to work pretty good. I used a makeshift little jig here to cut a slot in it, and it fits up on my tank. Jeremy's channel on Simple Little Life has done a wonders for my knife making game, so it was really cool to, to make one of his uh, one of his designs here. I then went over to the granite surface plate I have here and got everything flat before the glue up. The front of the bolster I went ahead and brought it up to a thousand grit since I won't be able to touch it again after everything's glued up. Then mix up a little bit of G-Flex epoxy and start slapping this thing together. I wasn't sure exactly how to clamp this thing or hold it, but uh, I just held the knife in my left hand and started stacking these uh, pieces one at a time. And that worked okay. I then have the, uh, I have the piece of gum clamped up in my vise to the right there, and you'll see I'll just place this whole assembly into it and clamp it up. But I made sure to get glue on all the surfaces here, or epoxy rather, and then I, I got this dowel all glued up and put on there and that's going to slide into that piece of gum. Slightly precarious, uh, it was hard to get the blade in line and straight with the handle block. I think I had, you know, when I was doing it, I got it kind of close, and I, I think I got lucky, but I can see, uh, I can see this going wrong, so I have to have to work on that and see if I can find a better way to clamp this guy up. But it took me a lot of fiddling around to uh, <laughs> make sure this guy was straight. So you can see it there. I just tighten the clamp up and uh, leave it overnight. But before that, I go ahead and clean off all the excess around the blade because, you know, I won't be able to get to that. All right, so I got the blade and the handle glued together. I think they're straight, but we will find out tomorrow. Um, I want to reiterate that I do not know what I'm doing, and that is apparent because this was really hard. But uh, we'll see how it turns out tomorrow. So I went ahead and left it inside because uh, it was getting a little cold in the garage and I wanted that glue to, to set a little faster. So the next day we took this thing apart and it looks uh, pretty straight. I was happy with that. I cut off a lot of the excess with the bandsaw and then took it to the belt sander and started bringing them uh, down even to each other, each of the four sides. I found this really difficult to get all four sides square to each other. I don't think I got it perfect, but I got it pretty darn close. It's you know, I saw a couple videos um, that Jeremy did when he took the blade out of the handle, and now I know why, because it's very difficult to get to this guy, uh, all the sides, when you are um, when you have the blade in it. But I have a slight taper, which is what I wanted. I went ahead and took a file to the bottom to get that flat, because it was hard to do on the grinder. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the slack belt uh, eventually and round that over. But before that, I'm going to mark some lines on the top so I can make some nice little uh, chamfers. Uh, if I was doing this again, I'd probably make those chamfers a little bigger now that I'm done and I have it in my hand. Uh, but, you know, it worked out. I got them started on the belt sander, and eventually I'll take them to hand sanding and clean them up. Before that, I go ahead and round over the belly of the handle so that it will fit in your hand. 
This is what it looks like off the belt sander, kind of rough. Uh, go ahead and start off with 320 grit paper and move up to 1000 grit uh, in my hand sanding process. So you can see me here getting it in my uh, knife vise. And then I'm taking a, a lot of time here and being very careful with those chamfers because I want to keep those nice crisp edges. I have a metal sanding block there uh, which doesn't have any give to it so I can keep those nice crisp lines. But yeah, I just uh, sand it uh, for about an hour here to get it up to a thousand grit, which is pretty painless. And I think it turned out pretty good. Now this is something I should have done earlier. I would have liked to have done this towards the end of my hand sanding process, but I forgot. So I went ahead and I etched my mark onto this blade, and then very carefully took some 1000 grit paper and went over my etch a little bit to make the lines nice and crisp. Now prepare yourself for epic sharpening. So after we got it nice and sharp, I went ahead and dipped the handle in some mineral oil for a couple minutes and then wiped it down. So I really like the way this uh, gum turned out. It looks nice and, uh, you know, poppy, I guess, for wood. Nice and pretty. It feels good in the hand. Uh, the handle looks a little blocky. I think it uh, could probably be a little thinner. I'm not sure how these are supposed to look. I haven't done as much research as I should have, but uh, I kind of like the way it turned out. So the next step was to take it inside and test it out on some nice steak. And it did an excellent job of slicing right through this ribeye. So I consider that a success. Now even for an eighth of an inch thick blade, it performs fairly well in the kitchen. So I'm gonna use this blade for a couple months and see how I like it. Uh, I may make some more kitchen blades in the future after I've done some testing with this one and find out what I like and what I don't like. So major thanks to Jeremy at Simple Little Life for this awesome template and the inspiration to make this knife. And it was really, really cool of him to put all that out there. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Also, please hit the subscribe button in the center of your screen, and I'll catch all you guys, I mean, y'all, on the flip side.